Hello everyone and welcome to the prairie. This is Matt from Indefensive Plants and we're on the hunt again today. Only this time we're looking for a tiny little fern called an adder's tongue. I don't know if we're going to find it, but we are going to see some cool stuff along the way. To look for it, we've come to this little park called Meadowbrook, owned and operated by the Urbana Parks District. It's a neat place full of a lot of great stuff. So come on, let's go look for a fern. Is there anything more stunning than a patch of bluebells? This is Mertensia virginica, and they are in peak bloom right now, which is really exciting. They're a member of the borage family, although it's not readily apparent by the shape and size of their flowers. And these flowers are actually more than just beautiful. They're quite fascinating structures in and of themselves. The stigma and anthers are separated by just enough space that they won't cross-pollinate readily. Another interesting thing about them is the fact that they start off this nice bright pink or purple color and gradually fade to blue. That's caused by a pH change within the cells of the flower petals itself. Another cool aspect of the flowering structure is that it's not very conducive to large bees. It's got this long tube which makes accessing the nectar quite hard and they dangle which means bees have to hover in order to get at the nectar. What they're really trying to attract are butterflies. It's not very common to find specifically butterfly adapted flowers in the wild although it does occur. Sometimes, instead of producing blue flowers, they'll produce light flowers that are almost white in coloration, and that is always a treat to find. This is an awesome species, and it's not going to be around for much longer. Pretty soon, it'll go dormant and won't return until next spring. Check out this red bud. This is a great tree, albeit a small one. Believe it or not, this is a member of the pea family. A closer inspection of the flowers would easily re reveal that fact. Unlike other members of the pea family, this tree doesn't actually form any of those root nodules that house nitrogen fixing bacteria. Probably has something to do with the fact that it likes to grow in kind of rich shaded understory forests where it doesn't need to compete very hard for nitrogen. This tree displays a trait called cauliflory, which literally stands for stem flower. Unlike a lot of plants whose flowers erupt out of the tip of the buds or the branches, these erupt from the trunk and the stem. There's a lot of debate as to why or what kind of advantage that might have. Again, it might have something to do with living in the understory, but regardless, this tree is incredibly successful and can be found throughout a lot of the eastern United States. It even has its own western relative. Now, as you can see, it's putting on quite the floral display, which isn't lost on all the insects around here. You can hear, if you stand underneath it like I am, this tree is literally buzzing with pollinators. It's a great plant, great tree for a native landscape, and obviously looks beautiful. Here I am laying in a patch of Creeping Charlie. It's not a native mint, but it's a nice one. It was introduced to America from Europe as a ground cover, and in fact, I think some people used to brew beer with it. It's not very invasive. It tends to only hang out in lawns, which makes it the bane of lawn owners. And any plant that annoys lawn owners that much is a friend of mine. One of the coolest things about this site is that it's undergoing active restoration. What they're trying to do is restore a prairie, and to my left you can see some of those efforts. Although it may not look like much right now, this is a prairie rife with growth, ready for spring and all the sun that's coming with it. Now to restore this prairie, they use fire, and although that might scare some people, it's got a lot of great benefits for the plants. Not only does it knock back woody vegetation, it helps restore the soils with some nutrients and helps seeds germinate. Now without fire, the prairies look a little bit more like this. In the absence of fire, woody vegetation like Japanese honeysuckle, European buckthorn, and privet move in and take over. And I don't know about you, but I kind of like native prairies a little bit more than I like invasive shrubs. Here we see betony. It's a weird little parasitic plant in the broomrape family. And it forms these weird formations in prairies called betony balds. This is caused by the very fact that it is a parasite. And I know a lot of you think parasites are icky and gross, and a lot of the human ones really are, but parasites can be great for the environment. And in fact, this one is increasing the diversity of this prairie. 
The roots of this plant have specialized cells called Hastoria, and they plug into the roots of grasses, and they suck nutrients and water from those grasses. And as you can see, grass cover is a lot less in this little bald here. Wherever this plant is growing, the grass isn't doing as well. But by doing so, it allows other vegetation, as you can see from here, evidence from last year, to get a root hold and do much better than it would if grass was still present. What's more, this plant is in full bloom and it's full of bees. It is a great nectar species. Hey, check it out. We found what we came looking for. This is the southern adder's tongue, Ophioglossum pycnosticum. It used to be Ophioglossum vulgaris, but that has recently changed. This little fern here belongs to a very ancient lineage of ferns. It's been around for a very long time. This obscure little plant is really easy to miss, but when you do find it, it's really worth taking the time to get down and look at it up close. This is pretty much all you'll ever see of it, this single frond and a tiny fertile frond called a sporophyll. That's where the spores will be produced. For much of its life, it lives underground as a gametophyte, feeding solely off the mycorrhizal fungi that support it. After many years of gaining energy, it'll occasionally throw up a leaf, and you can see some of those that are just leaves all around here. When it finally gains enough energy, it'll throw up a sporophyll, which spreads spores throughout the environment in hopes of succeeding in producing the next generation. This is an awesome little fern, and I really highly recommend going looking for ones in your neck of the woods. Ophioglossum is a pretty decently large genus, and they're scattered throughout the entire globe. And what's more, they're morphologically quite different from one another. Really happy to have found this plant. It's hanging out here near a little like makeshift trail, which is sometimes a pretty easy place to find them. They seem to like a little bit of soil disturbance, which might have something to do with the fungi, but I'm just speculating at this point, mostly just because I'm so excited to have finally found what we came here for. Great plant, so happy to have seen it. Call this one a success. Well everyone, it's safe to say the hunt was a success. We found what we came looking for and we saw a lot of great stuff along the way. How cool was that betony bald? If you're enjoying these videos, please don't forget to hit subscribe and keep coming back for more great botany. Thanks everyone and see you next time.